Yes, so we begin our episode today and this episode is definitely finally we've got some some at least some different answers to the question what center forward is Arsenal looking at at the moment. So we have some answers to it. Not my answers, but yes, uh, we've got some uh, legit answers. A report apparently which tells that what kind of strikers Arsenal are looking at. So let's see, let's see how things will turn out. So if you seek daily Arsenal content, best place to be. Consider subscribing, that's all I uh, tell you guys. So the first news is that Edu wants Arsene Wenger at Arsenal. So he says, uh, I respect. Uh, I told him I would like to see him a bit closer to the club and to myself as well in the future. That would be a real, real pleasure and special for everyone here. I was watching the Wenger film, thinking about how he can create that culture at Arsenal that Arsene had at, the mo at that moment the mentality that, that the players had, the feeling we had in the dressing room and what we built together as a team. I remember the respect we had between all the players. You need that in a long, long season together. We were good friends and we worked for each other. If I can help create that again, then that's what we want to do. So yes, that's one of the things will happen when Arsene Wenger comes to Arsenal again. But moving on, according to CalcioMercato.com, Alex Lacazette is more and more determined to leave Arsenal at the end of his current contract. No new signing, sorry, no new, uh, him not signing a new contract. And I think it looks like that's how it's going to end up, leaving on a free. Moving on, so Kevin Campbell has so spoken about Nicola Pepe. He says, when, you, when you've got two uh, youngsters from the academy who are starting games and being more productive than you, putting in a better shift than the writings on the wall for Pepe. So according to Kevin Campbell, Pepe is out. He is Pepe out. Moving on, so the Athletic have listed certain players that could be the possible candidates for a new striker for Arsenal. So the players that they've actually analyzed are number one, Dusan Vlahovic, number two, Darwin Nunez, number three, Alexander Ishak, Number four, Yosef N. Nasseri. Number five, Mohamed Bayo. Sixth is Jonathan David. Seventh is Ivan Tony. Let me know in the comments which out of the seven would you want. If you ask me, Ivan Tony would be a very good player. Mohamed Bayo. Okay. Uh, Ishak, promising. That's all I can tell you. But Vlahovic, Tony makes a lot of sense. Yes, in every aspect amongst these seven. Tony makes a lot of sense. So let me know what you guys think about it. Would you want Ivan Tony at Arsenal? Let me know in the comments. But Fabrizio Romano on Arsenal's interest in Renato Sanchez. I've literally made countless episodes on this. This guy coming to Arsenal. So Fabrizio says Arsenal had this boy on their list for a long time. I'm totally still a player that Arsenal like. He was on the list alongside Awa. Let's see if Arsenal decide to jump at this opportunity. There is nothing advanced. Of course, at the moment, there's nothing advanced. So, Arteta has opened up about the top four chances for Arsenal. He says, we go game by game after the defeat at Anfield. Obviously, you see things in different perspective, maybe. But we've been on a good run and, and we have to carry on going. Let's see where it takes us. So, yeah. Watch Arsenal's game with an open mind. Moving on, so talking about more stuff, Sambi Lokonga's stats yesterday were... I, I, I did not speak about it, not yesterday, but yeah, I did not speak about the Saturday's game. So, Sambi Lokonga, 88 passes, most of them. Most successful passes, 82. Most passes in opposition's half, 60. Most key passes, 6. Tackles, 2. Clearances, 1. Gained possession, 8 times. Crazy, crazy stat for my man. Moving on, Martin Keown has warned Mikel Arteta against bringing Arsene Wenger back to the club. Now he says, I wonder whether Wenger might have said to him, why are you not playing Kieran Tierney this week? I'm not saying he's blinkered. He's saying I believe in you enough to play you again. Whereas I feel it's very unfortunate for Tierney because he's one of Arsenal's very best players. And I think I, it might affect Tavares' development, but I think that call has to be made. And it's not been made today. So that is that, ladies and gentlemen. So it looks like there will be clash of the ideas between Wenger and Mikel Arteta if Arsene Wenger is brought into the club. But that totally depends upon what role will Arsene Wenger get. 
Moving on, so Ian Wright slams Obama Yang's miss. Now he says, poor finish. That's a great chance. It's a fantastic ball. It's quite an easy save for the goalkeeper. For me, Emil Smithro has to score first of all from where he is. But Obama Yang's miss, there's no excuse for that. I don't know what to say. So Ian Wright has made it clear Obama Yang should have done way better than what he did for the for the chance that was quite open for him but anyways nothing was done so we move that's all i can say so adam newson has actually brought in an update about arsenal's clash against chelsea now fifa confirmed the club world cup will take place between feb 3rd and feb 12th draw is today new dates will need to be will will need to be found for chelsea's premier league games against Brighton away and Arsenal at the Emirates. Sorry, at Stamford Bridge. So, uh, Arsenal home. So, that would be... New dates will be found for the Arsenal versus Chelsea game. So, let's see how things will be managed. Moving on. So, there's an attitude problem for Ishko at Real Madrid. Now, uh, La Razon cover claims that from Spanish radio that say Arsenal have made contact about signing him. But La Razon also say that Madrid have not been happy with Ishko's behavior. He's got an attitude problem and has shown irritation during matches and also in training. Given all of that, they won't object to a winter move. So it looks like Ishko is not being patient. So Real Madrid would be open to not coming in his way and letting him move. So if Arsenal or any other club wants Ishko, you can get him. There's no problem. No, uh, Real Madrid won't come in between. Because it looks like, you know, uh, Ishko does not have enough patience to play for Real Madrid again. We know what happened with Oregar and we know where he is. Moving on, so Arsenal and Tottenham. This is a very huge news. Now, according to Fichage as the Spanish outlet, Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur have stepped up their efforts to secure the services of Dejan Kulusevski in the January transfer window. Now, here's the news. The Premier League clubs have tabled offers for Kulusevski valued at around 35 million euros by the Serie A giant. So Arsenal and Tottenham have reportedly lodged their offers for Dejan Kulusevski. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about this. Uh, no. Interesting player. Not for that much amount of money. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think about Dejan Kulusevski to Arsenal. Do you think Dejan Kulusevski is the man? Let me know what you guys really believe in it. Do you guys really believe in it? I don't want to, so I don't think so. Moving on, so finally a big, big update about Raheem Sterling to Arsenal. Now you'll be saying, IG, shut up. Shut your mouth, IG. We've got literally a lot of news here. So here's the thing, we got an update from Ian McGarry. He spoke in, the, in his transfer window podcast. So he says, it's the case that his representatives have met with Manchester City and are saying to them that their player does not wish to continue or indeed explore an extension on his contract. Instead, they would prefer to explore the option of a loan deal, which they would like to begin in the January window. Whether or not that's possible remains to be seen, but there are several interested parties, including Arsenal. We know that Sterling himself turned down the opportunity to join Tottenham Hotspur on a permanent basis last summer, but the idea of moving back to London, the idea of having the guarantee almost of a starting place in another elite Premier League club is extremely attractive to him. It's whether or not Manchester City, of course, would want to see him play for a rival with regards to Champions League placings, title, etc. So would Manchester City want to strengthen a rival? I don't know. I don't know. I have even heard reports that Ferran Torres wants to leave. Bernardo Silva feels like he might leave. Mares doesn't feel that. Lots of Man City wingers are thinking whether to stay or not. But Raheem Sterling's case is pretty curious. Like he really is, his his representatives are really working hard to let him go. And it looks like it is true news. Ian McGarry has opened the lid and it looks like Sterling really wants to leave. So, again, I've asked this. Now, this development was not there, but now this is... Would you take Raheem Sterling at Arsenal? I would take him in a heartbeat. On a loan deal, in a heartbeat in January window because Arsenal lack a proper imposing winger. If they get Sterling, I swear to God, Aubameyang will have will have a lot of, uh, lot of uh, you know, they still require a striker, but I don't know if, if, if his uh, finishing is 
very much affected but sterling will definitely definitely improve obamiang's output i hope so that happens sterling on a loan it's a no brainer we should go for it uh, with this i like to end this episode thank you so much for tuning in if you see daily arsenal content best place to be consider subscribing cheers